Okay, here we are at the Prince Farm, and what I'm doing right now is getting this ANET ET4 Pro ready to start printing the lap diner, which is going to be the second part or item that I'll be putting on the website here in a couple of weeks. The lap diner, I know we've talked about it in other videos and did a lot of prototype working and everything, but now I need a consistent production of the lap diner parts, which consist of three major parts, the left and the right side of the uh, folding tray and the cup holder. So. What we've done is I've set this ANET ET4 Pro up to print this part. This left tray will take um, 32 hours and 59 minutes. So basically 33 hours just to print this one half of the tray. And it's being printed in PLA orange PLA and it takes 59.3 meters of filament so we've started this and I'm checking now to make sure I have to look very closely at the four corners the first layer on this is the most critical layer it has to adhere good it has to be consistent across the um, print bed. We are printing on glass on this ET4 Pro. And um, so far, it looks like the, the lines are going down smooth, consistent. We'll just keep monitoring this until I'm going to stay here till I get this first layer and see that it is consistent across the board and that this printer doesn't uh, need any other adjustments. And if that works out, we'll leave it and we'll monitor it from our cell phone up at the house, see how it's doing uh, through the evening and early morning and through the day tomorrow before we come back down here to uh, check on it again. So that's what we're getting ready to do now is start printing parts for my second product, which is the lap diner. Any of you that aren't familiar with the lap diner, I'm going to be doing a video uh, probably one of my next videos is going to be a closer look at both the NTI Helping Hand product and the Lap Diner product to show you what the final product looks like now and talk about some of the changes that we've made over this uh, past year of developing these products. Once this checks out, and I'm satisfied with the print on it, I'll probably be setting up about, uh, probably set up about 15 or 20 of the A-nets to uh, print this part initially on glass just to get some quick parts out there so I'll have some product on the shelf to sell because obviously if it takes 33 hours to print this one side to print both sides is about 66 hours that, that's a long time so I can't just crank these out overnight like I can some of the help parts for the helping hand so I'll have to have a little bit of inventory and I also have the uh, Tronic CXY2 Pros that I have several of them here that are also being set up to print uh, the same part, the uh, parts for the 
lap diner. So that's a little bit about what's going on down here. Okay, on this particular ANAT AT4 Pro, I've just fired it up. I'm now in the process of preheating both the bed and the head on it. What I'm going to be doing with it is doing some fine adjustment of the sensor and the nozzle to get the uh, thickness, the space that I want between the glass and the tip of the nozzle. And since I'm very precise about this, I am uh, bringing everything up to temperature because <clears throat> I can set it at one thickness and uh, between the glass plate and the nozzle and then once the bed and the head and everything's heated up and running uh, that gap will change uh, just simple physics about parts heating up and expanding and contracting and so forth when they cool so I want to get everything to temperature when I do this adjustment because I'm I'm looking for a very very fine line um, in my adjustment on these printers because they have to print print some parts and I want them to um, have exactly the right adhesion so that first layer has to um, be a certain height off of the glass. In other words, I don't want that bead too high and I don't even want it at what is normally acceptable. I want it pushed down a little bit more so that I get real good adhesion because these parts that I'm going to be printing have a large area and it's very easy for the corners to lift if I don't have excellent adhesion across the whole bed. So we'll be uh, setting this up. I'm getting the temperature now. Everything feels like it's preheated pretty good. And there's a little adjustment screw up on the top of this sensor. And then there's an Allen screw on the side of the sensor. Now the Allen screw on the side physically moves the entire uh, sensor up and down. So it has to be set and I try to get it as close as I can uh, to begin with. And then I do the very fine adjustment with this little screw that's actually on the sensor itself, which um, I believe is actually a little either a little resistor or capacitor, variable resistor, variable capacitor inside the sensor that adjusts the sensitivity. So that's what we're doing here. Okay. Now we're going to, we got this thing in manual level. So it's going to find the center point here. It's going to go down until this light comes on on the sensor, sensing that it's where it wants to be. Now I put this piece of paper under here. Okay, that's a little too loose. Don't want it to be that loose. So what I'm going to do is take this small screwdriver and see, I've got this small screwdriver in here and I'm going to adjust this thing a little bit. Went counterclockwise until the light went off. Now I'm going to re-home this thing to the level position in the center. I went too far, I can tell, because now I'm, okay. Let's 
do it one more time. This takes a little bit of trial and error. When you're doing this, you don't want the paper in there because that will affect that sensor. So you make sure that it's stable before you move in with the paper. Okay. Now we're talking. This thing would print pretty good. Probably would print fine with any of the settings that I've had here through this process. But if you're doing this and you really don't want to have any problems, um, sometimes you have to add a little too much. better to try to get it as close to perfect as you can get it. And that's what I'm trying to do. Okay. I think we'll be satisfied with that setting. Okay, this one's ready to go printing, I believe. Now we'll be doing the leveling and see how 
our bed levels out. Okay, our leveling looks really pretty good. Almost all point ones. Uh, I've got two point twos. They're on opposite corners. So we'll probably. I think I'll go ahead and put some filament in this thing and let it uh, go ahead and run for us. Well, while I was working over there on the other ANET printer, getting it uh, set up and getting the nozzle and the head aligned on it, this one has completed the first layer. And the first layer looks pretty good. We're starting the second layer now. So it looks like we're gonna have good adhesion. We're gonna go ahead and let this one continue to print for the next, uh, 33 hours and the one that I just uh, did the alignment on I'm going to be starting it up here in just a minute and uh, print the same part on it okay we're starting to uh, print the part on this one one thing I'll do is I'll feel this bead with my finger it's just my way of physically checking to see how much uh, how close that nozzle is and how flat that bead is the bead feels pretty good it's not flattened out a whole lot it it could be just a little bit more, I think, but I'm going to let this one print, see how it does. It's also possible that as it heats up a little bit more, it may uh, change the gap slightly and might give me a little less gap between the nozzle and the glass. But time will tell.